Good morning, everyone. Good morning, and welcome to our online Sunday service. If you don't know already, I'm Becky and I'm Pastor Anne, and we want to wish you a very happy new year. Um, here we are again, back online and back in lockdown. Um, but we hope that this service will really bless you this morning. Yeah. And um, when I was praying, um, sort of at the turn of the year, really, um, and part of me was thinking, thank goodness um, 2020 <laughs> is going. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and I felt kind of the Lord stopped me and he said, what have you gained? in 2020 and that was a bit of a, a <laughs> shocking question in a way because i thought oh gosh you know you feel like it had been a bad year difficult year for everybody but the lord said what have you gained and um and i think if we stop to think about that and uh, we had we did gain many things and I, I know i'm not um you know saying and i know people were bereaved and i know it was a very very difficult year but for some people and for many people actually we gained time we had um, less frantic diaries uh, week by week. Um, we had the most amazing spring, and I know lots of people really um, appreciated nature um, and watching the birds in our garden and things like that that we, you know, just didn't have, stop to do before. And uh, and maybe um, you know there were other things that we gained, like we gained perspective. We learned what really mattered to us that that people are the most important thing in our lives, and that when we um, find that we're cut off from those we love, how that impacts us and, and um, what a struggle that is for us. And so we gained that sense of priorities, didn't we, that um, we need to put people first before other things. And um, I'm sure all of you have got different things you could say um, about what you have gained if you take the time to think about it. But I did feel like the Lord really challenged me on that. Mm. And so we have a verse that Becky's going to read to you now, which kind of helps tie those thoughts together. Yeah. So it's from Psalm 27. And I'm just reading verses 13 to 14. And then I think they're just ones that we can stand on right now as yeah. well. It says, I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. And I think they're amazing words, aren't they? We need to know that we can remain confident in God. We, um, we can't change or control our circumstances, what's going on around us, but we can um, remain confident in God. So let's just um, open this service now with some prayer and we can look to God, our amazing Saviour. So Father God, we thank you so much that um, we can stand on your promises, that we can stand in your love and confidence that you are in control. Lord, we can't control or know what's going on around us. We can't control our circumstances, Father. But help us to um, to do what we can, Lord, by looking to you, to remaining confident in you, to see the goodness um, amongst all the other things that are happening, to know what we have gained in the past year, what you have given us in our spiritual sense, Lord, maybe in the time that we spent with you in prayer and reading our Bibles. We just thank you for that time. Um, and we just pray this morning that we can look to you, know that you are in everything, that you are with us, and that you stand alongside us, Lord. So help anyone that's feeling low or down this morning, Father, as we begin lockdown. I just pray you lift their spirits, you bring peace to their hearts, and that they will know that they are not alone in this. Yes. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So um, my talk today is called Nevertheless, and um, here's my thinking. I don't know about you, but are you fed up with doom and gloom? Because I certainly am. And um, perhaps like me, you feel like I need a bit of hope. I need something to hold on to. I need something to look forward to. And, um, and the words that really give me hope and that were written in the Bible to give the people of Israel hope are from Isaiah 9. And um, I'm going to read them to you now. It says this, Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. So those um, are from Isaiah 9, and it's just the beginning of verse 1 and also verse 2. 
Now, um, we all know these words really well. We read them every Christ at Christmas time because they go on to say, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And, and it's that very famous passage uh, describing what Jesus will be like. Um, but for the first time ever, really, I kind of read Isaiah 8 going into Isaiah 9 all in one day. And um, my Bible readings in December were all from Isaiah. And um, in Isaiah 8, the picture is really bad that um, Israel is going to come under judgment. Uh, war is coming to Israel. And the reason why they're coming under judgment is because they haven't kept their part of the covenantal agreement with God. They agreed to be his people. They agreed to live his way, but they weren't doing those things. And so judgment was coming. And yet into that picture of failure, of sin, of uh, wrongdoing, bursts the nevertheless of God. And I really like this nevertheless of God. And, and when I read it over Christmas, it was like, it just arrested me. It was that one word, nevertheless, despite all the doom, despite all the gloom, nevertheless, God was going to break in and do something. And, and the light is coming in the form of a baby. And this baby is going to be righteous. And he's going to be a righteous judge, a righteous ruler. It's going to be all the things that the, the people couldn't be themselves. And it's going to be all the things that they ever wanted in a good leader. And we know now, looking back, because that was written 800 years or so before Jesus was born. So they were looking forward. But we look back on that event now and we know that the baby that came into the world was Jesus. And he was the light. He was the great light that came to bring light into the darkness to the people at that time and on into all the generations. So this light that shines in the darkness um, which we read about in Isaiah, um, it has four effects that are spoken about in Isaiah 9. And these are what they are. And I haven't got time to read you all of chapter 9, but please look it up for yourself and read it for yourself because it's such a great chapter. But these are the four things that are the um, outcome of the great light coming. The first one is enlargement. The second one is increased joy. I think we could all do with a bit of that today, couldn't we? The third one is a breaking of burdens. And the fourth one is the lifting of oppression. And so I'm going to look briefly at each of those four areas this morning. So let's look at enlargement. And I don't know about you, but um, quite a few people feel like, well, I put on a few pounds during the last lockdown. <laughs> but we're not talking about that kind of enlargement. We're talking about, um, they're talking about the nation of Israel. And uh, what was promised to them as a nation was that their nation would be enlarged. Uh, despite the fact that at that moment in time, they were facing threats of war and judgment. But God was saying, when this light comes, the nation will be enlarged. And today, I really feel we might be in lockdown, but I feel that God is saying, nevertheless, church, enlargement is coming to my kingdom. Yes, your churches might have to be closed right now. And most of the churches are closed or they're only open for very limited numbers of people. But let me tell you, hearts are open in this nation right now. Hearts are open. People are looking for hope. They're looking for encouragement. They're looking for wisdom. They're looking for someone who knows what's going on right now. And we are the people that know those things. We are the people of God that carry the word and the wisdom and the knowledge and of God in this place, in this time. You see, uh, to anybody with half a brain watching right now, we can, it's very evident through the pandemic that we as human beings are not in control. We are not in control. This virus is running rampant around the world. We cannot control it. We can take measures that help, but we cannot stop it on our own. Our government is clearly not in control. It keeps making decisions and then having to undo them. Uh, it has it keeps having to adjust what it's doing. And it makes promises that we have seen have had to be undone even over Christmas. Um, but Isaiah 8 tells us this. Um, uh, Isaiah asks, should not a people inquire of their God? That's verse 19. So you see, when we ask God, God will enlarge our understanding. He will increase our wisdom. 
He is, remember, a wonderful counsellor. That, that's in Isaiah 9. That is who Jesus is. And, you know, perhaps right now, in this moment in time, in this season, perhaps God not only wants to enlarge his church, but perhaps he too wants to enlarge you as a person, you as a Christian believer. Maybe he wants to enlarge your wisdom, enlarge your spirit of discernment, enlarge your understanding and, um, and you know, enlarge your effectiveness uh, as a servant of Jesus Christ, as an ambassador of Christ to the world. You know, um, I always take encouragement from this, that the Apostle Paul um, was a great missionary, the, the first really big missionary that the church had. And he loved to be on the mission field and he did wonderful work on the mission field and he planted churches wherever he went. But God allowed this man to be held as a prisoner in Rome. And you think, why would God do that? Why would God cut off his mission field um, sort of activities? Because they were so successful. Let me tell you why. Because God was enlarging his ministry. And you can say, but that's, that doesn't make sense. And how can he, his ministry be enlarged when he's confined to a house in Rome? Let me tell you how. Because he couldn't be preaching in his churches words that are lost to us because we don't know what he preached in those different churches generally. There's a few things we know, but not many. But actually, because he was a prisoner, he had to write letters to the churches. And those words that the let, uh, from his letters were so precious to those churches that they made sure they kept copies and they circulated the letters around their region. And those uh, letters are still with us today in the form of the uh, in the Bible there in our New Testament, the letters that Paul wrote. And they have um, blessed and encouraged and guided and led uh, multiple numbers of Christians over the generations all because Paul was confined and restricted and kept in one place by the Roman authorities. And you think, actually, it wasn't just them, was it? It was God, because God wants to release the wisdom of Paul, not just for the churches of his day, but for the church, the church in the world, down the generations that followed. How amazing is that? Sometimes the things that we think are confining, sometimes the things that we think are restricting may actually produce our finest and our best work. And it certainly did that for Paul. And uh, if you think about it, you think about um, uh, like an olive press. It's only when things are pressed, when things are trodden, when things are being squashed that actually the olive oil flows. And maybe that's what God is doing. Maybe this is an encouragement to somebody listening today and you just feel I've just been pressed, I've just been squashed, I've just been squeezed beyond my ability to endure. But God is saying to you, no, not beyond your ability to endure. Actually what you're producing, the fruit of this is pure, wonderful oil of my spirit. So be encouraged if that's you today. Okay, let's move on to my second point increased joy and um, the light and the darkness brings an increase of joy like and the examples it gives are like at harvest time or like when um, after a battle uh, the the soldiers are collecting their plunder and if you think about those two kind of like metaphors that's where our joy can also come as Christians when we see souls added to God's kingdom, a harvest of souls, or when we see the, the kingdom of darkness, the kingdom where Satan has been ruling and ruining lives, actually being plundered by the light and the glory and the grace and the wonder of God. So um, that's where our joy can also be increased. So let's be alert in these days for the prompting of God's Holy Spirit, because who knows when a timely phone call or a tiny act of kindness might just open the door to somebody receiving Jesus today. 
And let's remember too that our joy comes from the Lord. And um, if we feel like uh, a bit lacking in joy, then it's time to really press into the Lord in worship. It, it's time to press into him through reading your Bible. Um, it's time to press in, um, at least at home, you can sing, can't you? We can't sing in church, but at home, we can really let rip with our singing if we want to. Why don't you do that? Uh, maybe you like to, to journal. Some people love to do um, journal. Uh, maybe you like to paint, maybe you like to do colouring, um, things that focus your thoughts and your mind on the Lord and your uh, lead your soul to um, shout and rejoice and dance and bless and worship him. And so why don't you find the thing that works for you and uh, press into the Lord in this season of um, confinement and restraint. Number three, the breaking of burdens. It, Jesus shatters the yoke that burdens people. Now, yoke is a funny word, isn't it? We don't really um, walk around with yokes anymore, but like a milkmaid would wear a yoke on, on her shoulders like that. And then on either side, she would have um, a string and then a pail of milk and she would be able to carry a heavier load because she had this piece of wood, the yoke around her, her neck and it would enable her to carry uh, something heavier than she would normally be able to. Or uh, a pair of oxen would be yoked together so that they could plough a field. Or horses, um, maybe horses be yoked together to plough a field or also to pull carriages. Um, the thing about a yoke, um, they do enable you to do heavy labour, but they are heavy. They are burdensome. If you're having to carry a yoke all the time, that is a heavy burden. And maybe um, some people listening today, maybe today you're carrying a heavy yoke of guilt or a heavy yoke of shame, or perhaps it's a heavy yoke of disappointment, or maybe it's a heavy yoke of anger. Whatever it is, Jesus breaks the yoke and you can come to him and you can say to him, Lord, I don't want to be carrying this anymore. The cross is the place to bring your heavy burdens and to lay them at Jesus' feet and, uh, and to say, look, Lord, I messed up. I did this or I'm so disappointed over that. Oh, Lord, I, I'm stuck in this addiction. I'm so burdened by it. And Lord, you, you bring it to him at the cross and at the cross, Jesus breaks the yoke. So why not bring that yoke to him today? And uh, and actually, he doesn't just break it. The words that it used in Isaiah is that he shatters the yoke. So it's like he shattered it it's in smithereens. It's in lots of little pieces. And it's just floating back down now. It is not heavy or burdensome anymore. And, um, and that's because of the resurrection life and power that is in Jesus Christ that you can receive in your heart when you lay your burden and confess your sin before him. So don't let the enemy lay these things that you've confessed to Jesus. Don't let him lay them back on you. That's very easily done. And don't take them to the cross and then carry them back with you. You just leave them at the cross. Do something symbolic that helps you realise I have left them behind. Maybe write them on a piece of paper and then shred them or, um, yeah, set have a candle flame and just burn them in your garden or something like that. Don't be careful. Don't do anything dangerous. But yes, you get the point. What I'm saying is just see them removed, see them gone symbolically, because actually they're gone by the blood of Jesus and the victory he won at the cross. Listen to this verse from 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17. It says this, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. So if you are burdened by your past, if you're burdened by your guilt, if you're burdened by your shame, you need to take hold of this verse and you need to stand on it and speak it over your life every day until that truth has gone from here into your heart. And you realise one day you'll wake up and you'll think, I don't need to say that anymore. I'm just free. Jesus has set me free. OK, last point, number four, the removal of oppression. Oppression, uh, I thought we should just work out what it actually means. And um, it says this in the dictionary, it says oppression is prolonged 
cruel or unjust treatment or exercise of authority. Now, um, there are countries where a lot of Christians come under oppression. I wouldn't say we're experiencing that here. But there is another um, definition of oppression, and it's this. It's mental pressure or distress. And I would say right now that a lot of people, um, certainly a lot of um, people in this nation, but I would guess all around the world, are feeling that kind of oppression, the oppression of lockdown, the oppression of restriction, the oppression of not being able to choose where to go and when to go, who to see and when to see them and where to see them, or that sort of sense of restriction, of limitation, that sense of, I, I, I feel really down, I need to see some friends, but you can't see friends. You can't do the things that would help you feel better. And you know, as Christians, we're not immune from those kinds of feelings. I guess every single one of us has felt like that at some point during 2020. And, you know, we're still in lockdown in 2021. We're going to feel these things. But, you know, uh, we do have within us the Holy Spirit who carries a different spirit, a spirit of joy, a spirit of freedom, despite the restrictions, a, a spirit of life, a spirit of hope, a spirit of peace. We are the carriers of those things. And um, so I just really encourage you, in this season, in these days, dig deep into Jesus in these days. You can't sing uh, in public, uh, but you can pray. And you can pray at home. And you can pray when you're walking the dog. You can pray when you're driving in your car to the supermarket. You can pray wherever you are, more or less. And so why not pray and press in and say, Lord, I want an increase in this season. You know, God said, what have you gained in 2020? How about what are you going to gain in 2021? What are you going to press in and ask the Lord for? Why don't you ask him for an increase of joy, an increase of peace, an increase of provision? Whatever you need, Jesus has the answer. Why not press in? Maybe you need his comfort. Maybe you need his hope. Maybe you just need his presence more in your life. So press in and ask him for it and believe with faith that what you're asking for, you know, you're going to receive it because he's, he's not going to give you bad things. You're asking for good things. He's not going to not give them to you. So press in, believing that he wants to bless you and encourage you and grow you in this season. And, you know, where we're struggling as Christians, where, where we're really finding it hard and and I, i'll be honest with you in in our own family there are days when one or other of us will be feeling really down and we'll, and we'll say to the others i feel really down today can you pray with me and we're fortunate i guess we're fortunate we can pray for one another but you know even if you live on your own if you're feeling really down you can pick up that phone and ask somebody in our church to pray for you and they will willingly do that for you so don't be down on your own. Call out for help and say, I need some help. Please, will you pray with me today? Let's be honest with one another. Let's be willing to stand with one another and support one another in this difficult season. OK, so that's my four points. So um, to conclude, let's keep look into the light because it's only as we look to the light it's actually only as we focus on the light that more of god is shining and able to shine through us we need to focus on the light and the light is not a sort of mysterious otherworldly Ooh, don't know what it is the light is a person and his name is jesus focus on jesus look at him lift your eyes up away from the circumstances to Jesus and um, and just keep gazing on his beauty, gazing on who he is. You know, there's some wonderful passages where there's descriptions of Jesus. You know, Revelation at the beginning, where John has a revelation 
of the risen Lord Jesus. And he knew Jesus. He lived with him for three years. But when you see Revelation, he sees Jesus in a completely new way. Why not read that again? Why not have a look at the, the beginning of uh, Hebrews, the beginning of Colossians? Look at the book of Ezekiel, the beginning of Ezekiel, where they have visions or they describe what Jesus is really like. Gaze on him. Open your heart to be enlarged and to see more of who he is. And I, my prayer for you is that you will know Jesus more in this coming year and that you will allow his light to shine brighter and ever brighter in your heart so that you will shine ever brighter to your family and to your colleagues in your workplace and to your neighbours around you and just generally in the world wherever you may go. So bless you and just take that word on board church. Amen. So we're going to um, follow the talk now by taking communion together. And so Becky's joined me again. And um, and we just heard, didn't we, in the talk that, that the power of the cross, the power of Jesus, what he did on the cross uh, has broken um, the burden and the yoke of shame, of guilt um, from our shoulders. And we are redeemed. We are brought back. And the price has been paid for our sins. So we're going to celebrate that victory together now as we take communion. We have our uh, wine here. We've got our bread here. And I'm sure you've got those ready as well at home. So Becky's going to start us off just by reading us a, a couple of verses from Romans. Yeah, so I'm reading uh, Romans 23 to 25a. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood to be, to be received by faith. So let's just take a moment to reflect and uh, pray over those words. So, Father, we just thank you so much for sending Jesus and we thank Jesus for being prepared to come and sacrifice himself in order that we can be brought back for God. So we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your shed blood and your broken body. We thank you that you did that because you love us so much. And we just, um, we confess, Lord, we, we have sinned, but we thank you that in you, there is freedom from our guilt, freedom from our shame and forgiveness and a way forward and a new life in you. Mm. So we thank you, Lord, and we rejoice that we can take this bread and this wine and we can celebrate that victory that you won on the cross and that we can also win in our lives in you. Mm. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we always break the bread to remind ourselves, don't we, that Jesus' body was broken. And I uh, know that you're going to do this at home. So we're going to pause our video now and take communion together. And why don't you do the same? And, uh, and then we'll see you back in a moment. So let's pray again together now. So Father, we thank you for feeding us today. We thank you that you fed us um, these symbols, the bread and the wine. But we thank you, Lord, that you've also fed our spirits with your word. And Lord, help us to take on board what you said to us today. May nothing be lost that you have spoken into our hearts. Mm. And may we act upon the things we've heard and live our lives more fully uh, for you and walk in step more closely with your Holy Spirit. So we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Great, so um, we can now spend some time in worship in our own homes. So um, you will remember that there'll be a link at the bottom of this video. Well, beneath, beneath this video, there'll be a link and you can spend a bit of time in worship. And the other thing that we're going to be trialing out this Sunday is um, a church catch up on Zoom. So grab yourself a cup of tea or a cup of coffee and at 11.45, we'll come on to Zoom and we can just have a catch up and chat with each other 
um, just like we would normally after a normal service. So we hope that it'll be a good time together. But first go and have some worship and then you'll find the link to the Zoom on our church WhatsApp group. Yay, so lovely to see you all. God bless. Bye. 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 Bye.